I believe we are going live now in many different places. So let me go ahead and check. I just want to be sure before I get halfway through the class and realize that it's not actually the case. So I'm going to Facebook. Oh, look, it says here, Tipsy Artist is now live. So that's good, that's encouraging. Let me click on that. And I don't want to have sound going off in two different places, but there it is. Yippee. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that tab out. And I see my painting and then I see me. So that's good. Okay, that's what we need. Wonderful, okay. What a relief. Okay, so here we go. We're going to paint. This is going to be exciting. All right, so we have a cute little Easter painting today, a little chickadee in a mason jar. And we have a wonderful painting kit that goes with this on our website, tipsyartist.com. And so it gives you all the supplies that you need. And of course, here's your wonderful online tutorial. And um, I will let you know too, I am now going through Zoom for my uh, streaming live services. And as I get used to this, I'm very used to going Zoom for private classes, but this is a little bit new with live. So I'm having to figure out how to deal with seeing chat. Don't quite have a handle on that yet. So as that starts to come through, I promise I will come back and check all my platforms and answer any questions that you have. But also if you do have specific questions about anything, you can always email me to at info at tipsyartist.com. So I'll be happy to answer um, any questions you have there as well. And I promise I always go back and check everything as well, everywhere and answer back on the feed. So, here we go. We have our tracing line art here ready to go. And let's talk about how to do this little step. We're gonna go ahead and just get right into it. So I have in the kit, I've got transfer paper and I've also got the line art already done for you. So we've worked out everything and yours will be pretty. Mine had a little glitch with the copy machine. So I felt like office space afterwards where I wanted to take it out to a field and throw it. And <laughs> Beat it with a hammer. <laughs> we finally got through that. I have a few lines, but it's okay. Yours will be beautiful, I promise. Um, so you won't have those extraneous lines in there. And uh, again, transfer paper. So you want to make sure that your dull side faces up and then your shiny side faces down. And then I have tape for you in the kit. I just make sure and tape up here at the top that keeps it secure. And that way you can trace everything. You'll also have a pencil that comes with the kit. And so basically all you do is you take that pencil and you just, just trace right over every single line. And then I always leave this bottom part untaped so that I can lift up as I go and check my work. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I worked ahead here, I'm gonna lift this off. And, all right, so initially the transfer is actually a softer line and it looks like this. So it looks just like graphite, like a pencil line. So you can certainly leave it like that. It kind of depends on your style and what you want to do. So some people like a softer watercolor look. Um, I do provide a permanent marker in the kit so that you can do a hard line. Uh, if you are a beginner just starting out, I always usually recommend doing a hard line because it does make it easier for beginners. So it just makes sure that it bleeds through all the paint. You can always see all your work. You never lose your trace. So it's really, really helpful. Um, one other thing that you might want to pay attention to in here, and I don't actually have it I used a smaller ballpoint pen actually to do this more intricate line work in here because sometimes this is such a thick line, this can be a little bit overpowering for those delicate features. So I would say just be really careful of your eye work and the nose in here on the chick. Um, that's a little bit of an unusual thing we have to work with. But so just either my actual, if you don't have a ballpoint pen, um, don't worry about it. Actually, just leave the transfer line because this chip is going to be a really nice muted yellow. And so even the transfer line will bleed through. 
So you can actually just leave that just as it is. I would suggest the same thing with the eyes as well. Just leave it as just the transfer line. Don't try to use your permanent marker on those delicate features. That could cause you some issues. And then other than that, I've used my nice thick line to go ahead and work all the way around this. So it's nice and beautiful, great place to start. All right, now we have our paint. Your kit comes with this awesome paint kit here, all ready to go. And I actually painted with this yesterday, so some of mine are just a little bit loved and used, that's all right. And then I make sure I have a bucket of water nearby and then your brushes, let's talk about those real quick. We have, um, let's see, I have a little family of brushes. All right, so here they are. So this is the Mama Brush, half inch flat tack on brush. And then we have Little Buddy, quarter inch flat tack on brush. And then Little Bit. So Little Bit, which is just a round tack on brush. Little Buddy, that's how I will refer to these cute little cuties here. And then Mama Brush. All right, so there we go. You'll also have some paper towels that will come in the kit. And the only thing that I don't actually ship is just the water and a bucket of water or, or cap, anything you can use to hold the water. But I also have just a cup of water nearby. Um, and then I also have some plates um, in the kit too. So you can go ahead and put some, um, let me put that up to where you can see it. <laughs> you can also put some uh, paint on here too. This is really helpful for mixing. Now I went ahead and since I paint so much, I've got a lot of extra, I've got some titanium white and some Mars black. You don't need nearly this much. You can just do nice healthy dollops of these. We're gonna go ahead and start. Let me give you a visual on the paint here from the kit. All right, so we've got our titanium white and then we have our Mars black. Now to begin with, I will want again about a quarter size heaping dollop of the titanium white paint. And then when we go to open it up, let's take a look here. So you'll notice there's a little foil cap. You'll need to make sure and lift this off so that you can get the paint out. Otherwise you'll be a little bit frustrated. All right. And then here we go. So I've got a lot more white than black. We're going to start with our mama brush. So Mama is, again, just a half inch flat tack on. And I do wanna make sure that she's nice and flexible. So what you can do is you can go ahead and put her in the bucket of water nearby. And then you can go ahead and do just a real quick little wipe, wipe off the excess. Or if you wanna have a little bit of water in the mix of your paint to make it a little bit thinner and more fluid, you can also do that too. Now I go ahead and paint through this process without an easel. That's why I'm doing a lot of my work at home. So the benefit to that is that, first of all, it's just convenient for most of us. We just work on a tabletop somewhere, so that works out really well. Um, but also it gives you the ability to add more water into the mix as we go, and you don't have to worry about water runs that come down on the easel. So that's actually really nice. You can relax a little bit with the water as you add it to the paint. So I've got a lot of white loaded up here. I just basically grabbed sections of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just barely touch into the black. So here we go, just barely touch, super tiny amount, push that in. That gives me a really light, light gray. But you can see how a little bit of black goes a really long way. Now I'm gonna give you an example of how powerful it can be. So some people like to really touch into it and then they put it in and then you can see how it goes to this really dark, dark charcoal. So you can see it moves quickly, overpowers quickly. So again, when I say barely touch into it, I really mean it. So it's just barely a touch, becomes very dark. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm, I'm gonna grab a lot more white. We'll probably use some of that as an accent, but for the most part, I wanna keep this background super, super light. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by going ahead and just dragging my brush back and forth, nice horizontal strokes all the way back and forth here. Firm pressure just keeps that going all the way across. It's quite 
beautiful. And you will notice I'm just painting right over the line work. That is absolutely intentional. Because all of that will bleed through. And by the way, I just want to say hello to everybody out there. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going live in a lot of places. And I promise I will catch up with all my comments after the class. But thank you so much for being here today. Again, just taking this back and forth, nice firm pressure. If it does get a little bit dark on you and you want to lighten it up, there's a few different things you can do. You can always just touch back into a little bit more water and then also grab a little bit more of the white. Again, just keep that going back and forth. Now this background is basically going to look a lot like a shiplap in the background. So it's like an old distressed wood. Give myself a little bit more room here. All right, so I just realized I wanted to make sure and turn my phone the other way. I wonder if it's too late for that. Let's see. No, I can't. I'm going to get that figured out, y'all. I'm going to, I know it'll work on a horizontal paint, but on a vertical, I was sort of hoping to have it like filling the whole space. Okay, I'm gonna work on that later. I don't wanna do it in the middle of the class. <sighs> Learning curves. I have learned so much in the last few days. I'm becoming a real geek. I do love it though. There's just, it's nice to learn new things. All right, so this is looking really good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add, while the paint is still wet, you can still see the shimmer there, it's still wet. So this is a great time to add in an accent color with a darker shade. So I've got that darker charcoal gray here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little nice touch of that on the end of the brush. And then I wanna go ahead and just hold that brush parallel to the canvas and then just kind of lightly drag it into the center here. Real light touches of that. And I just kind of randomly add that in the side or on the sides. Just take that all the way up. And if you have a little bit of too much of a dry brush effect where you don't feel like it's softly blending in, you can always come back in, just add a tiny touch of water to it and a little bit more of that white into it. Your first mix, just kind of push that back into the mix. And again, this is a really light hand, nice parallel touch in parallel to the canvas. It will feel a little bit awkward in this hole, but that's also what helps give you a nice gentle hand too. So, and I have to, of course, give a little bit of symmetry to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the very same thing here on the other side. Doesn't have to be exactly the same. But little touches of that to kind of balance this out. Kind of running out of this mix. I'm gonna add a little bit more of a touch of that black in there to it. Just light little touches. I go ahead and start just on the edge of the canvas and then just pull right in. a few of these all the way through back and forth. All right, I'm gonna go back into the original mix now of a lot of white, tiny little touch of that black. And again, you can add just a tiny touch of the water here to make that more fluid as it just spreads back and forth across the canvas. And you can already see how that Line work is definitely starting to bleed through the paint. So we'll just keep this going. So I definitely just pull it all the way through. This is just basically optimizing your relaxation part of this process because we don't want to have to deal with all of that cut in work because that's very time consuming. It's also a little bit stressful to have to work in around all those little tiny edges. 
So we're just trying to make this part of this process easy for you. Because definitely with painting, it's really important that it is relaxing. And so every time we can have a little shortcut that makes it easier on you, then we try to optimize that and take advantage of it. All right, little shades of some darker accents now coming through. So I added a few more touches of that black to the white. And my paint's still nice and white in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do light little touches. Just kind of drag that in. Just a nice little soft pull. Again, the key is make sure your brush is almost completely parallel to the canvas. And start on the edge and then just pull in and then just lift off with a light hand. So that's looking wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna place this mixing plate off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brush. All right, so I've got my little bucket here. Let's talk about rinsing out our brush really quick. So we're gonna go ahead and spin it round and round and round. All right, so I'm gonna pull it out and check it out a little bit here. All right, as I do, getting cleaner and cleaner. I do quick little drags off the side of the bucket. And then go ahead and dry it off my paper towel. My fringe is getting in the paint. <laughs> oh, it didn't hurt it. It's all good. The hazards of hippie fashion. All right, so I have a nice clean mama brush now all ready to go. For our next step. Now, I think what I'm going to do is we've got our mason jar to work in. I want to go ahead and give that a little bit of setup and dry time. So, working at home, of course, you can always use a hair dryer. I think that's a little bit disruptive during a class. So I'm not going to do that today. And plus, I know I can work into certain areas without really disrupting the next color. So, we have a nice, uh, playful mix of some of those new colors. Like, we can do some really pretty light pinks. Um, some of those beautiful sage greens and some of that light light gray that's still drying even if it you know it happens to mix in a little bit it won't hurt it'll only kind of help and add a little nice texture to it so we're going to go ahead and move forward with the sage green that'll be our next step the acrylic paint sets up and dries pretty quickly sometimes in like five minutes um, or even less sometimes five ten minutes so by the time we get done with our little leaves, we can certainly move on to our beautiful roses and then they'll be all good to go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start with bright yellow green. So let's go ahead and place this on our plate nearby. All right, and since I am going, this is my actual, I did test yesterday, but this is my first time to use uh, live, let's see, restream. So I'm gonna check something real quick here before, because I just wanna be sure. I don't wanna keep going if I'm not actually going. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm all good. Nope, look at the keyboard. Right, this will take just a second. I'm going to type in my I should have left the window open. I closed it out and I should have just left it open. I'm losing my C on my keyboard. It's broken. Tipsy artist. So see what happens. I just want to make sure I'm still going. Yeah, because I know if I'm going there, I'm going everywhere. So yes. Okay, good deal. All right, we're going to put this off to the side now. Get back to painting. All right, so we have, let's get a visual on this again. We have our bright yellow green now. And okay, so I'm going, I'm also going to take up the jacket because I go back and forth. The, I don't know what the weather is like in your world, but it's about, 
15 degrees outside and then our heater kicks on it gets really hot and then it gets cold it gets hot it gets cold all right i need to get my fringe out of the way anyhow so this will be i'll stick with this all right so we've got our bright yellow green and then i did about uh, a very generous pea size amount there and then let's also go ahead and do some cadmium green get a little bit of that going and then i also love and adore okay, i love and adore this next color it's one of my favorites this is called viridian Get a little pea size amount there. And then off to the side. So we're going to be making some sage greens, but I also want to have a little hint of turquoise happening. So I'll be using some primary cyan blue. So all these gorgeous colors to mix with. And I still have my titanium white and my Mars black off to the side. So that is good because those will really help us. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use, let's use a little bit here. Just need little touches. So a little bit is the smallest brush that I have. It's just a little round tack on brush. And I'm going to go ahead and push into that white. You know what? I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of viridian. I'm gonna show you the turquoise first. So that's going way teal. Let me add a little more blue. Perfect. Okay, that's getting to where I want it to be. And of course, you saw how that had a range of different colors as I progressed through adding white and blue and the viridian. So you can have it be a little bit more teal if you want or add more blue, push it to more of that turquoise color. So that's really pretty, that's an option. Um, also, let's go ahead and just do a quick little rinse out and let's just show you what it looks like to have some of our little greens nearby. So I'm gonna take a little dollop of the white and our bright yellow green and our cadmium green and keep it really light like that. Now to make our sage, you can add little touches of this gray that we have mixed up. So a little touch of black, a little touch of white, and that can make a really pretty sage green. Just cooling that off a little bit. So that's kind of nice to have nearby too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to work this into my leaf here. So I'm letting that point work for me and then I take it out to that fine point and then just lift off with a light hand. getting a nice solid coat in there. Let's do another little leaf right in through here. So letting the belly of the brush kind of go around that curve and then utilize that nice fine point to take it right out to the edge. Then I may want to intensify this a little bit. So I'm going to pull in just a little bit of Viridian as I go, kind of darken that up a little bit, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and work on this little leaf right in through here. And then I want one more of these over here to the side. As promised, I'm also going to show you just little hints of a few little turquoise leaves that come out of here as well. But I'm also going to take the same brush, I'm going to spin it out into a nice fine point. I'm going to go ahead and go right back into that meridian. Nice fine point. And then just 
go right through the center. It's a nice little line here. And again, hello to everybody out there. And I promise I will follow up with comments after the class. I'm using a new live streaming service and we're working through Zoom. And so I have not quite figured out the flow of chat yet through this entire new live stream service, but I promise I will. And then I'll be able to interact with everybody a lot more. I'm gonna to touch into a little bit more of my turquoise. in there too. Really pretty. And let's do a little tiny leaf right in through here. So nice little delicate line and then just little diagonal strokes that just come off of the center and out to the side. Kind of gently pull out from there. All right, we're going to go ahead and rinse out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add little touches of like feathers in here. So let's go ahead and use some of our violet. By almost looks black, but as soon as we add a little pop of white to that, it will definitely lighten it up considerably. So let's add a little touch of white. Ah, oh, beautiful! There it is. All right, so we have a feather here. So again, this is a little bit of the titanium white with the violet. And let's do this one. And then we will define these two to really help them pop like a big feather. Because right now they just kind of look like little flat leaves without definition. So now what we wanna do is take our little bit brush and twist it into a nice fine point. Here it is. And then let's go ahead and make a line that goes all the way through the center. Same thing here, center line. And then let's do our little diagonal lines just right off of the center. And now over to the other side. Love it. And then let's do a tiny little bit of an outline, just a light sketch all the way around. And then re-emphasize that center line one more time. Let's do a few more of these off to the side. So delicate line up through the center and then little wispy touches off to the side. All right, it's looking good. Now we can start to work into our roses. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my little buddy brush. This is just a quarter inch flat tack on brush. And I want a light pink color. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've got a plate from yesterday. I have a lot of this left over. So I'm gonna talk about the paints that I used. I'm using a primary magenta and then also a cadmium red. So I'll do about two pea size amounts of this and an equal if you do them in equal parts, then you get a nice, cool red when you mix them together. 
which is quite lovely. Now I want to go ahead and just use my primary magenta with some white for a really pretty light pink color. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a nice big dollop of white to that primary magenta. A lot of white, just a little touch of that pink, that magenta color. Let's go with more white here. Let this be pretty light. And I have a little bit of this orange nearby, so I actually love it. I'm going to grab a little bit of that. Let me give you a visual on that too in the paint kit. This is a cadmium orange. So this will push it to a really pretty kind of a coral color. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of push this out. I'll lighten this up a little bit too. So I'm adding a little bit more white. And initially our roses look a lot like just big lumpy circles. So I'm just going to get that color down initially. Big lumpy circle of color. We will define that. But for right now, this is a great step. Now I want to have this next rose over here be a little bit different color. So I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of the pink and just kind of push that out in half circles to each side. Same thing here. a little bit more of a touch of that orange kind of depends on what you like now, i've got a little bit of yellow over here too which is kind of fun that is just a primary yellow in your kit you can add a little bit of that that really warms it up so that's nice all right so now we have this really great foundation here let's do a little touch of a little more pink in here touches. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just scrape off the excess paint because we can use that later. Rinse that out and now it is time for pattern work over the top. So I'm going to come in with my little bit brush and just pure white paint. Just pure white and then I'm going to go ahead and just lightly drag the brush, wiggle it just a little bit. I do what looks like little like parentheses or like little half circles and I'll take that around the shape of the rows. And sometimes as I do that I kind of push the brush out a little bit for more thickness and then sometimes I keep it a little bit thin. This is kind of random. Kind of push that out in a little circular pattern all the way around that rose. All right, now a smaller one here again, just little half circles. And just kind of wiggling the brush a little bit, kind of working that in a little half circles all the way towards the center. You definitely want it, you don't want it to be too perfect. And this is where a shaky hand can kind of be your friend. You definitely want that little bit of wiggle. Because in nature, it just looks a bit more natural that way. When there's that little bit of wiggle to it, because it's certainly not a perfect half circle. So that's our foundation. You can see how that's creating a wonderful, beautiful first layer. Little half circles all the way around. All right, so that's looking great. And you know, some people love it just like it is and they just want to go, you know what, I'm good walk away. I like the way that looks. I'm going to go one more layer with a darker shadow. 
I always say this is optional because actually I think that's really beautiful as a very simple rose as it is, but I'm gonna show you one more little technique you can do. So I'm gonna come in with a clean little bit brush. I went ahead and rinsed it out, dried it off. Uh, I'm gonna come back in with a dark color. So here, this would be, you could either use your cadmium red in a pure state, or you can use your uh, primary magenta, or you can do a little bit of those together for that cool red color. But again, it's very dark, very contrasting. So I load my brush up, do a little twist in there. That way I maintain a nice fine point right there on the end. And then I just do a little comma and then lift off with a light hand. See how that makes that beautiful little shadow right in the middle of the rose? Same thing here. And again, it feels like you make a comma and then just lift off with a light hand. And you could leave it just like that. Or you could just play a little bit more with a few more little shadows. But again, I'd be very minimal with this. Take that little brush and just you can add just a few more tiny little shadows with that darkest color. Just a little bit. And if you feel like you get a little too heavy handed with too much dark, always come right back in with another layer of white right over the top. So we have our beautiful roses now. And let's see here. I think I want to go ahead and work on a little bit. Of that. Let's do the um, let's do the pink mason jar. So I've got a beautiful pink mason jar. All right, I've got my little buddy brush here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of water because the mason jar is actually a little bit transparent. So I'm definitely gonna add some water to my pink. Now this pink I had earlier, it was that primary magenta and the white. So let's get a little bit more of that. And a little bit of water. Gotta thin that out. a lot more water to this because I definitely want this to be a little bit transparent. So again, this is my little buddy brush. There's a lot of water in the mix. And I'm just placing this over the entire mason jar here. Do have to do a little bit of cut in around our little feathers. This will be the lid that I'll work in here. That's a little bit darker, so I'm gonna save that to the end, but that will be a nice charcoal gray. Okay, grabbing a little bit more water, making this just a nice thin coat of pink over the top. All right, now a little bit of guidance here. If you're, as you're doing this at home with a kit, sometimes people are just more heavy handed with their paint. And if you absolutely get too much coverage over this to where you really cover your entire um, lettering that you worked out in the beginning, don't worry about it. You can always, the, here's the answer. Basically all you do is you just let all of this completely set up and dry. And then you can actually just, I give you lots of extra letters anyway and extra um, sheets for different words. And so what you would do is you would just cut it out in that one small section with the transfer paper just underneath. And then you could just place it down right in that area over the dry paint. And then you could just retrace over that and then you, you're gonna be set. because I am trying to be a little bit um, light handed and thin with the paint so that I don't completely cover over that lettering. And I'm noticing that it's getting a little bit, um, or the paint is becoming quite opaque and I'm 
losing my lettering. So if that happens, you can always, again, come back in the end and just put it in over the top. All right, this is a pretty big area, so I'm actually going to switch brushes because I don't want the brush strokes to become too choppy. So let's go ahead and switch over to Mama. Let's add a little bit more water, real thin, transparent pink right over the top. And the bigger brush will give me a light feathery stroke and I'll be able to kind of softly feather those brush strokes out and create just what looks like a nice wash right over the top. Again, I'm trying to turn that brush as much as possible over to the side. Just kind of lightly feather out any brush strokes that are still visible, real light hand. All right, that's looking good. And you can see how more water in that mix and that transparency is really a nice look because actually the mason jar is clear. And so even if you see a little bit of that brush stroke coming you know, from behind that we did initially, that's actually going to be a really nice look there too. All right, awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our, let's do a little, a little bit brush here. And let's go back to a gray. So I've got my, little bit brush and a little bit of white, a little bit of black. I want this gray to be a little bit darker, a more um, silver look for that lid. So I'm not scared of the darkness anymore on this one because I definitely need that to be more defining. Add a little bit of water to make sure that it can get into those thin, tiny areas, a little twirl with the brush, nice fine point. I'm gonna go ahead and work into this. We gotta get in around that little leaf right there. I've got a little bit of a lid line there. So as I work, I'm gonna pull into that little bit of black. I'll show you that real quick. I don't want to lose that because gray definitely has good coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in while the paint's still wet. And I'll get a nice soft blend between the two, that light gray and then the darker black. Really nice. Now I've got a little bit more of that black now to help define this. And we do have to be a little bit more precise in here. So I've got our light gray now. And I can work back in with my leaf over the top too, because I may have a little bit of overpaint that happens. So I'll work back in over this as well to help that not look so unnatural. There we go. Light gray. And a little bit of that black, and that line. I'm gonna come back in. I still have some turquoise 
over here to the sides. I'm gonna use my same little bit brush, that same mix, and then let's sweep right back in, right over the top, because this is coming out in front. And we're a nice little center line, so dabbing into a little bit of that primary blue and that viridian. And we'll do a center line right through the center. And a few little diagonal lines right off to the side. Very pretty. All right, we'll let that set up a little bit. And then let's go ahead and work on our cute little uh, check here. All right, so this is, let's get another plate. Yeah, this one right here. So I've got some primary yellow from earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and do a fresh batch here. So make sure we've got that going. This is our primary yellow. And then in your kit too, you've also got some cadmium yellow. So I'll show you some of that. You can warm it up a little bit with that too, if you like it. So let's take a little look here. So here's our cadmium yellow. Here we go. I am going to add a little bit of white with this. See how warm that is? And then let's grab some of that primary yellow. I'm grabbing white from over here because my white over here is kind of messy with lots of paint. So I want to make sure this stays really bright. Beautiful, warm, pale yellow. I'm going to go ahead and start to paint this into my cute little chick here. All right, right next to the edge, I want just a little hint of shadow. So I'm gonna use the same color, in that same color family rather. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in a little bit of that darker cadmium yellow. And just come right next to that edge. darker yellow. And I'll use that darker yellow too for the little beak. Just remember to get that nice fine point because sometimes the belly of the brush gets really full of paint makes it hard to get into tiny areas so i do that little twist all right so i'm seeing some brush strokes happen so i'm going to go ahead and just hold that brush over to the side just real light You can see how there's just enough of a shade difference there where it brings in some contouring and it helps define where the little neck ends and the body begins. Now I'm going to go back into that pale yellow, so a lot more white here. Oops, I got a little bit more. Okay, I got a little spot of water on there. I did not need to do that, but no worries. Let's grab a little tiny 
paper towel nearby, so we have these. Get a nice little pinch out, a little, pull back where you can see it in the contrast. See, there's a little pinch of that. And then you just wanna come directly down and just lift, and that just will absorb that little bit of water. Get rid of the excess water. Nice pale yellow. Got a lot of reflective light on here. I want to make sure I can still see my little eyes. This is my titanium white and primary yellow. Just mix those two evenly together. And thank you again, everybody out there for joining me. And hello to everybody. All right, now we need to go ahead and do our little egg here. So I've actually got some turquoise that I'll be using for that. This is what we mixed up initially. So again, the mix on this is our primary cyan blue. Oops, that's right there. And then the viridian and then the white. I'm adding a little bit of water to it as well. I want this to be a little bit translucent. Because I do have some pattern work over the top. So just a nice, almost like a watercolor look. So I'm adding a lot of water to the paint. Basically just kind of helps eliminate too many of those brush strokes in there, feathers out that paint. Creates a nice smooth surface. All right, we're 
getting there. Okay, so next up, we're getting down to really just fine details with our lettering and the little eyes. And so what I will say that I definitely recommend for beginners, this is some really tiny, tiny areas and for beginners that, um, or that if you, if you are nervous about shaky hand or anything, I would actually recommend just using uh, your pencil or that ball, that fine um, ballpoint pen. You could you know work into this area. My pencil does not look good. It looks very used. But this is so delicate in here. I would definitely use that finer point. You can paint it on, but. As a beginner, I honestly would not recommend that. Let's see, I'm gonna show you. This is actually just a pencil, but just a mechanical pencil, but it can get into the really fine areas. And I would even start with this just to kind of keep it nice and soft give you some confidence to work back into it. And then I would also just recommend that ballpoint pen. Black, <laughs> preferably. Or she'll have a blue eye chick. And I'm leaving a little bit of white out there for the white of the eye, but you can dot that in later too. I'm gonna to show you a little technique for that. All right, you can see how even the pencil work looks really pretty phenomenal there. But again, very delicate hand. You don't want to overwork it too much because the eyes in those really tiny areas, if you get too much black, it can really hurt them. So, all right, I'm showing that I'm still going live here on Zoom. And then I'm frozen on my Facebook page. So that's really interesting. Not sure why that's happening, and I hope it's not happening. I guess I can, I don't know. I don't know why it is. Hmm, it's probably not a good thing. Okay, uh, let's do some, I know I've got great internet. <laughs> so, let's do a little bit of our green, bright yellow green cadmium green and viridian. I'm gonna do a little bit of grass here at the base. And then we're just going to pull up, start at the base and just pull up here. So this is just a nice, fun, grassy look here at the base of our painting. It's certainly optional, you don't have to do this. Just kind of randomly take it all the way across. You can have some kind of come up. Vary your shades of green through here too. Make some light and some dark. Don't be afraid of adding a little bit more texture here. Yep, just right in there, it looks very fun. And let's take it all the way down here to the base. Now, 
I ran out of my bright yellow green, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of that. So here that is, bright yellow green. And just pull it. Again, this is my little bit brush and I just start at the bottom and just pull straight up and I'm going to keep adding in just more shades of green as I do this. So I've got my viridian, my cadmium green, and then my bright yellow green. So that's looking really sweet. And let's see. Here. So if we want to do a little bit of some painting here on the eyes, we certainly can definitely use the little bit brush, the smallest brush that we've got. So do a little tiny twist right into that black. Let's get a little visual on that. Make that very, very tiny on the end. go right into that little eye. It's a really light hand. soft little chickadee eyes. I'm going to go ahead and do my lettering. And this is also something where if you let it completely set up and dry, you can come back in with your permanent marker and do this over the top. Um, that's also a really good piece of advice. You never want to put a permanent marker over the top of wet paint or it will just completely destroy your permanent marker. But you can certainly do that. It's a lot easier to do a permanent marker for your lettering especially for beginners, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to paint this on. So I use my little bit brush and I just twirl it into the paint. I twist it out here. And then I'm just going to follow along. Cause I still see it bleeding through the paint there. We have that from our trace from earlier. It comes with the kit. I'm also using my pinky to help stabilize my hand as I do this. So as you're doing your little loops, you want to make sure you go around the loops, not inside. That way you preserve that negative space in there. All right, so that's looking really awesome. And then I have a little bit of a shadow I want to create in my mason jar before I finish up here. So I've got a little bit of that darker black. I'm going to go ahead and work into that light pink that we had earlier. And I just want to do a quick little sketch of a line. A little bit of water in that too. Catch 
just going to switch over to my mama brush for this. Just use the nice thin line of the end of the brush and then that will help me make a nice tight line around the edge. A lot more control on that. Good. I'm going to re-emphasize the shiplap in the background. So this is a little bit of our white with our black. Make sure it's very thin on the end there. Mine's got a little bit of a curve to it just because my brushes are, I use mine a lot. So let's try to see your brush will be brand new. Let's go ahead and get a newer brush here. Darker charcoal. Check the end. Right, so it is nice and thin and a lot straighter, so that's good. So this will help me make those nice little lines, little sketch of a line happening here in the background for our ship lap here. It's a light sketch. That looks great. All right, now there's just a little bit of pattern right over the top here that I wanna do. Little tiny hearts on the top of our egg. So I've got my little bit brush and I'm gonna go ahead and go into that really light pink. And you can create this with just little touches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do like a little touch there, and a little touch there. Just sprinkle these around a little bit. So I'm letting the brush actually do the work for me. So again, nice healthy amount of light pink and then I just do a little press. And take that to a fine point. We're just making little tiny hearts. So a little diagonal press, another little diagonal press and then just take that down to a little point. So we've got a great start. Now we want, you can leave it like that, just little hearts, or you can do little leaves on the end too. So I'm taking my clean little bit brush, a little bit of that light green. We wanna make sure to use the light green this time that we have nice contrast against the turquoise and just little tiny stems. and then little tiny leaves off of those stems. So little touches for the little leaves. Just like a little spot of paint there. Okay, so I think we are done here. I'm coming back in with a little bit of that bright yellow green. I want a little bit more of a light accent right over the top. Yeah, I think we're done. Looks so beautiful, such a great painting for Easter. So again, all the supplies that you need are on our website, tipsyartist.com. And thank you again so very much for joining us today. We had such a great time. And I'll follow up with everybody when we're done and all the comments. So if you do have any questions, let me know or email me info at tipsyartist.com. And thank you so much again, and we'll see you soon.